Well, hello, all my baker friends. I hope that you have gotten your copy of The Great British Baking Show Kitchen Classics based on the latest season of The Great British Baking uh, Show, which I adore, as you all know, if you've been watching my uh, videos. And I am baking my way through this book. And I decided to jump over to the dessert section. And I decided to make Paul's Ginger and Orange Treacle puddings. Remember those? This, if you recall, on the show was a technical challenge that every single one of the bakers failed due to lack of time. I understand that now. They needed more time. I followed the time that it called for and I had the recipe in front of me and I still needed more time. So, they are very yummy. I highly recommend them, but I'm gonna let you watch my little mini baking video of them and then I will come back and I will tell you some of the pitfalls to be aware of and some of the problems that I had before I got it right. So, watch it. So here we go. We're jumping into these orange treacle puddings. That's what they're supposed to look like. So I zested a big piece of orange and then I cut them into little tiny matchstick strips. And you're going to boil these on the stove with some sugar and water. And you're just going to heat that up. Be very careful because it does get extremely hot. Hot sugar could be very dangerous. So put your little strips of orange there and you're just gonna cook them down. And while that's cooking, I'm making the other syrup for the recipe. So some more sugar and a little bit of water. Back to our orange strips. They're gonna cook down till they're almost translucent. And then I just laid them out on a cooling rack and they're going to uh, cool down and then I'm going to take them and you can either twist them around uh, you know, something to give the little curls. I just actually just twisted them with my hands and then sprinkle some more sugar on top. So that's what's going to go on last. So back to the puddings. I have pudding tins. You can get these on Amazon, which is where I got mine. And you want to cut out a little um, circular piece of parchment paper to put in the bottom of each one of your pudding tins. And then you're also going to cu uh, cut out a larger circle to cover the top of your tin. You're going to cut out pieces of foil that same size as well, but we'll get back to that. So my other syrup, uh, as you can see, is cooking along there. It's getting a little dark. Uh, you add some more water to it and some lemon. And that's going to be the syrup that you pour into the tin. So there I'm pouring it, but look at it. It's very dark, isn't it? You do not want your liquid to look like that. That is not the right color. So this is why. Look at that yucky, hard piece of candy. Mm. So I tried again. This is the color you want for your syrup to go into the bottom of the tin. So back to the muffins, I'm making the batter now, and I've got some uh, more orange zest I'm putting in there as well, and some eggs I've got in there, and then my flour. I have some pieces of stem ginger cut up into little pieces in there, so distribute that through the flour, and once you do that, you're just gonna fold that into the wet batter, um, and it's gonna make a nice, thick pudding batter to put into each of your tins. So you can see that it's not uh, a real flowy batter like cake batter. It's, it's a little thick. And I guess they're about halfway up the tin. And so now I'm going to wrap them. So there's my round pieces of foil that I'm putting over the pieces of parchment paper and wrapping them completely around. It asked you to tie them with string. Um, I did that with all of them but one. I just wanted to see if it was really necessary or not. I've put that in a baking dish because I'm going to add hot water. Make sure that you make a bain-marie when you do this. Um, our creme anglaise sauce that's going to go on top has milk and heavy cream and some lovely uh, vanilla bean that I split down the middle and scraped off that yummy stuff. And you're going to put that into your cream. You're going to heat this on the stove. And you're going to eventually add your egg mixture. You're going to do that very slowly so you don't cook your eggs. And you're going to cook that custard down until it gets nice and thick and coats the back of a spoon. And you can see there when you draw a line through it, it doesn't run. So let's check on our puddings. I'm putting a skewer in. No cake is coming off, so I think they're good to go, right? So let's take them out, put them on the plate. 
This was the cooking time they suggested. So when you see it, it's still not quite right. So about the fourth one that I turned out, which is this one, I think was the right consistency. So it's got that syrup on top. It's standing up nice and high and yummy. And so you just take your beautiful creme anglaise that you made, pour that across the top of it. And you can see all those little flecks of vanilla bean in there. Oh, add your little twist of orange um, peel on top. And there is the picture of theirs. And this is how mine turned out. So about the fourth one, I think I got it right. Um, yummy. I can just tell you that when you cut into it, it's kind of um, pudding-ish, cake-ish. It's kind of hard to describe, but it's just all deliciousness. So there you go. There's a picture of my finished uh, ginger orange trickle pudding. So now you see the finished product. They were delicious. I highly recommend making these. It was my I think I've tried to make a, a traditional British pudding before. This is my first time making these exact ones. So I had a couple of uh, little pitfalls that happened. The first of which was when I was making the syrup that you put in the tins first that's going to be on top of the pudding when you turn it out. And um, I guess I cooked it too long. It just turned into a big piece of hard candy not good, not good. So I had to redo that. Um, also, it asks you to tie string around the cups once you put the um, parchment paper and then the foil. I found that you really didn't need the string. I wasn't using convection on my oven, so maybe if you were using a fan and it was blowing, it, it might you know keep them from, from coming off, but that was just an extra step that I didn't really need to do. And um, I would just say bake longer. Uh, I, I tested my temperature in my oven, everything was fine, but I ended up having to, to push it. Uh, this recipe is actually on the Great British Baking Show website, so all of um, the, the entire recipe is on there for you. It says to bake for 40 to 45 minutes. I was up to an hour, maybe an hour five. So it seemed like every one that I took out a little later turned out a little better each time till I got the right one. So yeah. And then the creme anglaise, that's the first time I've ever made that, which is absolutely yummy with that fresh vanilla bean. Yes. I think I got it just a wee bit thick. I think I just uh, didn't take it off of the, the stovetop quite uh, early enough. Uh, I found that it got a little thick. It was still yummy and it was still runny, but I think it would have been nicer had it been a little thinner. So, so yeah, Paul's Ginger and Orange Trickle Puddings. Make them uh, and press your friends with them. It's, um, it's very good, but... Make, check them, constantly check them. Okay.